The lesson for this week is on appropriate technology. Now in the previous lessons we've looked at some pretty high-tech kinds of things. You know, we've looked at space travel, we've looked at manufacturing, we've looked at medicine, we've looked at biotechnology. Now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on technology, how it might be used uh, in a third world nation. See, not everything that's, that's developed as technology can be used uh, everywhere around the world. Not too long ago, people who lived here in Kansas had difficulty getting phone service with some of the providers because they just didn't have service in our areas. Well, that's changed and we now have that technology available. But at one point, the appropriate technology for us would not have been an iPhone or an Android because the providers didn't have that capability of providing that level of service. So we're going to look at appropriate technology and what that means for third world nations. Now, let me give you a definition of appropriate technology. The book kind of uh, uh, does this also, but let me give you a little bit different one. Appropriate technology's goal is to increase the standard of living for a developing world without condensation or condensation complication or environmental damage. We don't want to be condescending to these other nations. We don't want to treat them as if they are somehow not as good as we are. And we don't want to complicate them with different technology, nor do we want to damage their environment. So when we look at appropriate technology, we're going to find some things are true about it. First thing we're going to find is true is they're more labor intensive. You know, some of the technology we have today is, is not labor intensive at all. In fact, uh, what it does is it undo, undoes a lot of the labor that's required. But a lot of the appropriate technology is more labor intensive, it requires fewer resources, and uses low cost material. So, for example, my phone probably would not fit as appropriate technology in some of these countries. Computers, as we know them, would not be appropriate in some of those areas. Now, the book defines three ways to look at appropriateness of technology. It says we can look at technological, cultural, and economic issues involved with the area where we're trying to provide that appropriate technology. Let me give you an example of 10 pieces of appropriate technology. These have been rated by uh, an organization, and believe it or not, there are groups out there who deal just with appropriate technology. They have ranked some of the uh, technologies that are available. The first one is discussed in the textbook. It's that one laptop per child. These are very expensive laptops. Uh, they're, they're not really cool. Uh, no one's going to buy one and take it to the boardroom <coughs> or the classroom. They're kind of juvenile looking but they're very inexpensive and they're, they're networked. I heard the, uh, the gentleman who uh, developed this project speak at a conference a few years ago. These are networked on a serial uh, uh, program so that if you have a child in one village and then a child in another village and a child in a third village, they're able to get some internet connectivity if that first child has connection they wirelessly are able to connect with these other villages. Now, these villages are not very far apart. It's not like living here in Kansas where you have to drive quite a while to get to the next community. These villages tend to be closer together. Now, there's some people who say, well, why do you want to give a computer to a kid in a third world nation? Well, we know that computers help and enhance learning. And that's why they want to do it. They want to provide low cost, simple technology computers. Now that's the most technological thing on this list of 10. The second one is a solar powered light bulb. It's an LED light 
that in, in African and Asian uh, nations that have a great deal of sunlight, they have collectors that collect and store the electricity and they can run those lights at night. Now you think, oh, you know, how, if it only runs for three or four hours, what good is that? Well, it saves them a lot of wood because they don't have to build fires. They're able to use that light. And most nations uh, go to bed when it gets dark anyway. But this provides them very low cost, very low cost way to have a light bulb. Another one, uh, number eight, is can concrete canvas shelters. If you've watched the news, you see that, that people, large groups of people are run out of one country for one reason or another, and they need to provide shelters. Well, what these shelters are, they have a large rubber balloon, a bladder, inside that they inflate, and then they put this concrete canvas covering over it and just pour water on it. And that then creates a shell, and it can hold uh, several families in these units, and they'll last for up to two years. So it provides temporary shelter very inexpensively. You know, that's, that's a very low-tech way of providing something, some technology, that will help enhance their lives. Number seven, the Universal Nut Sheller. This has won several awards. A lot of the African nations grow peanuts, and shelling peanuts is a very difficult thing. Well, a company came up with the technology that with $25 worth of equipment, they can build a nut sheller that has a crank on it, it's manual, has a crank on it, and it will shell enough nuts that one of those would provide for a whole village. Now this is not high tech. In this country, nuts are shelled by sending them down an assembly line. But remember, we have electricity. We have machinery. We have the ability to do that. But these small African villages don't have all that. So a nut sheller enhances uh, their economy tremendously. Uh, number six, a pot and pot refrigerator. These are clay pots inside of a clay pot with a sand barrier in between that has uh, liquid. You put water in that sand, and as it evaporates off, it refrigerates that inner pot. Now, they're, they're claiming that they're able to keep tomatoes up to 21 to 28 days. Uh, I can't even do that in my refrigerator here at home. But low technology, low cost way of enhancing their lifestyle by using a technology that's appropriate to them. Uh, a bike powered water pump. Rather than using a pump, they, they've hooked up a bicycle. Now, again, we have a lot of labor intensive work. You've got to pedal that bike to pump the water, but you pump water a lot faster and get a lot more water than the old way. Free wheelchair mission. This is a group that started building wheelchairs. Now, wheelchairs in this country are pretty expensive, but they were able to come up with a wheelchair for $59.20. And they're able to provide wheelchairs to people who are handicapped in third world nations uh, for a lot less than it would cost to send them uh, wheelchairs that we use. Plus, they have larger wheels, so they're able to navigate dirt roads a whole lot easier than the wheelchairs we have. The Hippo Roller Water Project. You've probably seen pictures of women carrying five-gallon ceramic jars on their head, uh, bringing water from a stream back to uh, their village. Well, what this Hippo Rolling Water Project did is it, it created these large barrels that hold 24 gallons of water, so almost five times the amount of water that they would carry, and they're on rollers. They just roll them from the water back to the village. Um, a rocket stove. This is a stove that uses indigenous woods that are available, but the way it's designed, it centralizes the heat and it boils water a lot quicker. And the last one, number one, the life straw. This I found to be an absolutely fascinating device. Um, one of the problems that people have is polluted water in, in some of these uh, third world nations. Life straw 
is a device where you can put it in the water and there's a straw that you pull the water up through but the water goes through a filter before it hits your mouth and it filters out about 99.999 percent of the bacteria that's in that water. Now all of these are technologically sound devices but they're not technology like we think of. I'm recording this lecture on a, on a camcorder. You know, the camcorder would be useless to them. It's technology that works for us. The stuff that these, these ten, top ten lists of appropriate technologies, these were things that were developed for people who had a need and we tried to find what we might even call a low technological way of resolving that problem. Now the book goes on and talks about wind power and, and, and biomass and a lot of other things. But keep in mind that what we're looking at in this chapter is not advanced technology, we're looking at appropriate technology that will work for these countries. This is an exciting chapter. It's a very interesting area that a lot of people pursue as a career. And it may be something you want to look at yourself. So until next week, I say bye-bye. <laughs>